This video is intended to provide an overview of the CCPP single column model. It will cover topics such as the purpose of a single column model, how the CCPP single column model operates, the capabilities of the release code, overviews of the included cases, how it is tied to the UFS, and planned improvements. For some background, the motivation for creating this model is twofold. First, given the incredibly complex nature of NWP models, there is a need to test its various components using a spectrum of simpler models. The concept of a hierarchical testing harness for a NWP system might look something like the collection of boxes on the right. Simpler models excel at investigating issues on the physical process level, whereas more complex models are of course re required for testing on the systems level. A single column model is one necessary but not sufficient tool within the hierarchical testing framework and is the simplest way to test a group of physics schemes together as a suite. The second motivation has to do with the CCPP, which contains a repository to hold compliant physics schemes and a repository for the software framework to connect those schemes with a host model. The CCPP requires a host model to do much of anything useful, and this single column model provides the simplest example of one. For those unfamiliar with single column models in general, here's a quick overview of how one works. The initial state of the column comes from either observations, an idealization, or some higher dimensional model. Rather than a dicor advecting properties throughout the domain, forcing is specified to mimic how the column state is changed by a surrounding atmosphere. Although there are many ways to apply forcing in a single column model, it is often done in one of three ways. First, one could specify one value that combines all advective forcing. This can be called total advective forcing, or sometimes revealed forcing. Second, one could split the advective terms into a horizontal term that is prescribed and a vertical term whose vertical velocity is prescribed. The vertical advective term using this method is then a function of the modeled state profile gradients. Third, one could use advective forcing as in the second method, but add nudging to given profiles. This will ensure that the modeled state does not deviate too much from a desired state, but can limit the response of the physics. Regardless of which forcing method is chosen, time is integrated forward and the forcing is applied every time step along with calling a suite of physics. In this way, the physics is allowed to respond to the forcing and produce its own tendencies. The end state is a combination of forcing and physics. There are many benefits or pros of using single column models. For one thing, there are orders of magnitude cheaper to run. The interpretation of the output is not complicated by 3D dynamics, and the software is typically simpler and more approachable. Of course, although single column models can be instructive for understanding a physics suite's behavior, it should only be one part of a testing hierarchy. Second, as with all models, the old computing adage of garbage in, garbage out applies, and single column models are certainly sensitive to the applied forcing. One of the aspects that makes this particular single column model unique is its use of the CCPP, which is illustrated here. In this diagram, the SCM box represents the main calling program. It is responsible for time integration, setting up the vertical coordinate, calling all I.O. routines, and maintaining the model's state. There's another software layer that handles the application of large-scale forcing, which one can logically think of as a data component dicor. The CCPP physics on this diagram corresponds to the CCPP physics repository and, as shown, is a collection of physics parameterizations with potentially more than one of each type. For example, several different microphysics schemes, convection schemes, etc. One of the keys of the entire CCPP is that each of these physics schemes will have an associated file containing metadata. Metadata files contain information about what variables are communicated in and out of a physics scheme. They are a complete description of a scheme's data interface in a way that the CCPP framework can understand. Likewise, on the SCM side, there are similar metadata files that describe what variables it can provide to the physics and how and where they exist in the SCM's data model. At model build time, the CCPP framework scripts are invoked to read metadata from the SCM and metadata from the physics to construct, or auto-generate, a software cap that acts like a custom-made physics driver. 
At build time, the CCPP framework must also be given a description of the physics suite or suites for which to construct one or more software caps. In order to run the single column model, one needs to configure both the case to run and the physics. This diagram shows how that is done through a total of five external files. The green arrows represent the case configuration and the blue arrows represent the physics configuration. The first file that is needed is the case input data file. It contains the initial conditions and forcing, which can be derived in a couple of different ways. The first way is from observations, like a field campaign. Typically, folks associated with the field campaign will post-process the mountain of observations into a meteorologically balanced initial state and time-dependent forcing. This data is often in some proprietary format that must be converted into the NetCDF format that the SEM expects. The second way is to use the initial conditions from a point in a 3D model and save the dynamics tendencies for that column to use as forcing for the SEM. Today, the first method is the primary way of running the SEM. A script that reads the UFS initial conditions and dynamics tendencies and outputs a case input data file for the SEM is an active development. The second file further configures the SEM for a given case. It contains information like the time step, output interval, directory paths, and vertical grid levels. The other three files on this diagram all configure the physics. The way to specify which physics are run in the CCPP is through an XML file called a suite definition file. All CCPP based models will use this kind of file. Along with the suite definition, there's also a file containing name list options for the given suite. The last file is a list of tracers that the given physics suite expects. Finally, the model produces one NetCDF output file. It's typically configured to output instantaneous values of whichever variables the user wants for every time step for debugging purposes. It can be configured to output less frequently and or utilize time averaging like in other 3D models, but part of the beauty of SEMs is their limited memory and storage footprint, so instantaneous values at every time step for hundreds of variables is not computationally prohibitive. There have been several public releases of the SEM alongside the CCPP since the spring of 2018. Each release provided a well-documented, multi-platform tested snapshot of the code, with support provided by either a help desk in the early releases or a forum in more recent ones. Typically, a small number of CCPP suites were officially supported with many other CCPP compliance schemes provided for research and development. Version 4, released in 2020, corresponded with the UFS Medium Range Weather App version 1 release. The latest version 5 release was alongside the UFS Short Range Weather App version 1 release. The latest release of this code is version 5. It's up to date with the NOAA operational physics for GFS version 15 as of the version 5 release of the CCPP physics and is also able to be exercised with several developmental suites. It's publicly available on GitHub and contains both the CCPP physics and CCPP framework as Git submodules. In terms of its connection with the CCPP, the SCM provides a simple example of how the CCPP framework is used to reconcile model provided data with that needed by all schemes within several physics suites and how a suite is initialized and run through use of the CCPP API. The SCM repository also contains several Python scripts, including a run script to execute permutations of supported physics suites and cases, and a script to generate cases with UFS initial conditions. For surface interaction, one has a choice of using prescribed surface fluxes, interactive LSM-generated surface fluxes, or surface fluxes from a simple ocean scheme. In version 5, there are several supported cases included. All of them are based on observational field campaigns, and most come from GWEX cloud system study cases. For example, there are two deep convection cases, one over the ocean from the TWP ICE field campaign, and one over the land from the ARM Southern Great Plains observational site in 1997. The other three cases are all shallow convection related. The Aztecs case represents a stratocumulus to cumulus transition over the ocean. The MOMEX case features shallow trade wind cumulus over the ocean, 
and the lasso case features continental shallow cumulus. Although the case library included in the repository is limited, the next version of the SCM will feature two improvements that will greatly expand the number of cases. The first is the adoption of a new internationally recognized standard SCM input format. The second is the ability to create complete cases from UFS global and regional run output. I will give a brief overview of the cases that are included in version 5. The first case is based on the TWP ICE field campaign, which stands for a Tropical Warm Pool International Cloud Experiment. The field campaign was undertaken by the DOE ARM program and took place near Darwin, Australia in January February of 2006. It was sampled by both remote and in situ measurement platforms, both over the ocean and land. Using observations from these platforms, a case for both LESs and single column models was created that features both active and suppressed convective states related to the local monsoon. For those wanting to learn more about the case and intercomparisons among contemporary LESs and single column models, papers by Fridland and co authors and Davies and co authors in JGR are excellent resources. Another deep convective case, albeit over land, is the so-called ARM SGP Summer 1997 case. This case is situated over the ARM Southern Great Plains Observational Supersite, or Laboratory Without Walls, and again used a wide array of remote and in-situ measurement platforms over June and July of that year. Over the 30 days of the intensive observational period, the network observed three different summertime weather regimes, including disorganized convection, clear and hot, and a passing mesoscale convective system. The case is divided into time periods that roughly capture these three regimes. A fine reference paper for this case was written by Xu and co-authors in 2002, which should be read for further details. Switching gears to shallow convection, the Aztecs, or Atlantic Stratocumulus to Cumulus Transition Experiment, took place near the Azores in the Atlantic Ocean in June of 1992. More than one case has been generated from this particular field campaign, but the one that isn't included in the CCPP single column model repository is the second one, generated by the Euclipse program. It features a column that is translated geographically, such that it follows the vector of an air mass as it transitions from a purely stratocumulus regime with a well-defined inversion layer to a trade wind cumulus regime with a more diffuse inversion layer and increased surface heat fluxes. In many three-dimensional weather and climate models, this transition is often poorly simulated, so this case can provide a challenge for a physics suite to get right. For more information, the papers by Brotherton and co-authors from 1999 and Vanderdussen and co-authors from 2013 are good resources. Another included case that relies on DOE ARM data is the LASSO case, which stands for the LES ARM Symbiotic Simulation and Observation. It actually represents one of many cases available from the LASSO program. It, too, uses the ARM SGP SuperSite observational platforms, but the included cases focus on shallow continental cumulus. The case from May 18, 2016, was arbitrarily chosen for example purposes. One of the really great things about this program is that they not only provide forcing and initial conditions for SEMs, but they also provide observation data and LES simulations for every case for comparison. To date, there are many cases available from 2015 through 2019. Gustafsson and co-authors describe the program in their 2020 paper. The fifth supported case in the repository is from the Barbados Oceanographic and Meteorological Experiment, or BOMEX, whose data is now over 50 years old. As the name suggests, the field campaign took place near Barbados in the Lesser Antilles of the Caribbean Sea, and it was a joint project amongst seven U.S. agencies. It features shallow, non-precipitating cumulus over the ocean from June 22, 1969. The low cloud fraction can be a challenge for physics suites that have been designed for large horizontal grid sizes. Although the data is relatively old, there have been numerous studies utilizing it over the intervening decades. A particularly relevant model in comparison can be found in a paper by Siebsma and co-authors from 2003. Although this single column model is an independent software repository, there are many ties to NOAA's UFS that bear mentioning, since it exists within the same software ecosystem, and many users and physics developers will be interested in contributing to UFS development. 
So in addition to the CCPP, what other ways is the SEM tied to the UFS software ecosystem? Although the SEM can be configured to have many different vertical coordinates, as long as they are converted to pressure for the physics, the default vertical coordinate is the same sigma pressure hybrid coordinate used in FE3, but unlike FE3, today it is limited to the B Eulerian. Development is underway to have the option of using the same semi-Lagrangian formulation, whereby the forcing omega will be used to deform the vertical surfaces and vertical advection will be calculated implicitly via FE3's vertical remapping algorithm. The physics data structure and physics name list are nearly identical between the SEM and FE3. This means that the SEM can be utilized by physics developers to test the CCPP interface in a much simpler model before transitioning the code quite straightforwardly to FE3. Finally, as mentioned previously, in future releases, one will be able to run an individual column from a UFS 3D run to replay via the SEM. Since the SEM's inception, it has seen a wide range of applications. For example, scientifically, it was first used internally within the Developmental Testbed Center to study the influence of the grell freitas convection scheme on the GFS physics suite, including sensitivity to the forcing ensemble included with the TWP ice deep convection case. Lisa Bankson and co-authors used it to compare the behavior of the European Center's physics suite to an experimental GFS physics suite for tropical convention in a nice monthly weather review paper in 2019. The simplicity of the model makes it well suited for pedagogical use as well. For example, at the AMS annual meeting in 2020, this SEM was used as part of a short course for introducing the CCPP. And from a software engineering perspective, its lightweight computational footprint allows for simpler debugging of physics code. In late 2020, the SEM was used to cache and fix a significant bug in the implementation of the RRTMGP scheme within the GFS suite. In this instance, the easy use of output on every time step was instrumental in tracing the bug through the code. Although the CCPP SEM is a useful tool as it sits in the repository today, there are many planned improvements in the near future. First, there is an international effort amongst single-column modelers to coalesce around a single-case input data format called DeFi. Adopting this new format will facilitate sharing cases across institutions that use SEMs. Second is the UFS column replay capability, or the ability to use initial conditions and dynamics forcings from a given grid point within UFS applications. This will be accomplished via a Python script that reads the UFS initial condition files and dynamics tendencies from the history files and outputs a case data file in the aforementioned DeFi format. Third is the ability to isolate physics processes better. This will work by selectively editing a CCPP suite definition file and specifying whether other parameterizations are represented by a data component with tendencies to be applied like forcing. Fourth, Combining the abilities of the CCPP single column model in a user-friendly, all-in-one application following the lead of the European Center is a high priority. To summarize, the CCPP single column model is one component of a UFS-based hierarchical physics testing framework whose components share the CCPP as a means to interface with physics. It's developed in concert with the CCPP and publicly released alongside it. It can be used with a number of supported suites including the operational GFS physics, as well as a number of non-supported physics schemes in the development branch of the repository. It is distinct from the FE3 DICOR, yet shares some critical similarities in order to maintain physics compatibility. It has been used in a wide range of applications in its short life and is well suited to investigative studies of physics suite behavior. Finally, the CCPP single column model is being actively developed with a number of expected usability and functional improvements in the near future.